Hello lads, and welcome to the long-awaited and aforementioned 288 Lux 5 5 Piston Door tutorial. So, uh, sorry for this being super long overdue, but it was really kind of out of my control uh, exactly when this was uploaded. Um, basically just recording this as, as soon as I can, just kind of throwing this together. I'm going to try to do this in one take, if that's even possible, do the explanation tutorial there. Uh, but, yeah, this thing's been beaten out by uh, quite a large margin, but this one it still has some kind of practicality and it's pretty clear so it's like 6, 6 seconds open close well 6.15 close uh 6.35 open and it's pretty cool because it's also a full wall trap door so the wiring plus the wall here just look on the other side I think it's still a really nice door because it's pretty fast for the size and uh, former size world record. So let's just uh, start building the door, I guess. So I'm going to build up three blocks from the floor level there. I have double extender, three, three double extenders, just standard mega tech layout. I'll explain the differences between this and like 351 blocks five by fives very briefly before I begin. Uh, there really are no differences in the layout, it's just some of the sequence is a little bit different. Too, like, mainly because the top, uh, the, the layout doesn't really allow us to do very much, so... Let me see if I can just maybe go a little faster through this part. Sorry, I'm building very sloppily. I haven't played on a uh, mouse and keyboard for quite a while, because... I don't know, I'll, I'll maybe make a video later explaining where I've been for the past month, but... Just had to point at this point. So four storage on this side, and it's just a really dumb way to do it, but whatever, uh, like this. So the first thing that the first thing that was problematic about making this uh, thing too wide. Let me just grab all my items here. Is this top part? Is that I can't we can't access this row of pistons. Like we should be able to in a 351, but they're not like this. Uh, but instead, it you could actually use a double pulse for it instead. So you could do something like this uh, for the closing, and then if we simply have a toggle for the last pulse on the closing, we could actually have a double pulse to pull the blocks up like this, and that's very useful because uh, we can just kind of begin our input with uh, this double pulse. So what we're going to do is place an observer above this right gust for this input here. It's over here. We're going to have two droppers to silence each other. Uh, you can just grab whatever items you want to silence them. I'm going to use my J2KOs here. Use the other J2KO because remember they have to be different items not to uh, not to just flow into one or oh, whatever. They have to be different items so they don't mix. You get the idea. And then we're going to have this go down and then run up into here for the double. So now you can put it. Got that. So we're going to just do the top first and then I'll explain the bottom why that's challenging. So we're going to do the storage now. Um, so we're going to have a hopper right here. Oops, that's the dropper. Have a dust on that. Oops. And then uh, two observers running down. Have dust on a note block right here and then a three tick repeater running into this block and that'll power the piston when it's here and then we're gonna have uh, I honestly have no idea how this works and I'm not gonna pretend that I do I tried I've tried many times to explain exactly why this double extender works and I'm still yet to find one um, but it does it's just, I was just kind of messing around at that point I mean <laughs> what do you expect Anyways, two observers this way. We're going to do the two storages here. We just need one item in this dropper. I have this here. Go to note block. We're going to have an obsidian right here because uh, there's an updated piston here. It'll, it would update that piston from this dust. If we didn't have a movable, it would just push all the way over like this and then like this. And we can kind of test the storage. It won't like fully work right now because of 
this needs updates from somewhere else to like fully work. Um, but you can kind of see like this, and then um, move this piston here. You don't have to test this. You probably don't do it because like that, and that'll work later. I'm not exactly sure why it does not here, but whatever. So I guess just a little bit of explanation, I guess. Uh, what I'm assuming is the second, the second pulse of this four tick repeater is what powers this and it gets updates from this line being powered like this for some reason. I have absolutely zero clue why that works, but it does. Um, so anyways, uh, this works because of, um, we're powering both of these twice. So we basically just do this, 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 and then this again. It doesn't push down because uh, while this is finishing retracting this block here, it, this, um, it's one game take away from being done when this powers and it doesn't update again. It only powers once. It's, that's used a lot in the bottom. We, so we don't have to like power these specifically an amount of times. It's very useful. And so for this triple circuit, there's not really much space here. And to get this long enough pulse to make the triple work, we actually took a double, I'm actually going to take double pulse from here. I'm running two observers like that. It's going to be dropper, hopper. I have two items in this one. So two items in this one, I have a comparator here. And this messes up on the closing because it grabs early, but it actually is tick perfect on the opening and it doesn't mess up by some miracle. Uh, power this, I have a lamp going into there. And then we're gonna get the, um, since it's, this top is actually 1.11, uh, I believe in the previous version, I had like a redirector here and an updater piston, but we could actually just do this because we only need one update uh, for when the pistons are right here at the beginning. So now we can test this. Okay, that did not quite work properly. I don't know exactly what happened there. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot an observer right there. That just powers the uh, lower triple extender. Everything else is fine though. So now we can just have this right here. Set it up exactly like this. This piston spit out, these pistons spit out. Fine. It'll go like this, and it doesn't finish all the way because we still have to take a pulse from the bottom to push it down at the end, uh, which is a single, and then to retract it, which is a double pulse, and we can use this area right here for that. So we're going to take a signal to the bottom from this side right here, just go down into this, and since we kind of need this space to power these pistons, it was actually found that I could take an output from this and have a piston here to power it and then just simply have an immovable here later, which we're gonna have. So just place a sticky piston facing down and a movable there. So this doesn't push over on the, uh, on the closing. And basically for this input, we're only gonna have one of them, which is gonna be, oops, the three observers facing upwards and have a block here and then a lamp on this side and a note block on this side, which is pretty stupid, but I'll explain exactly why later these need to be two separate things which I think is pretty funny. Uh, but anyways, the reason why this is a bit difficult is because it's gonna be difficult to just power these singles right here. Um, well, anyway, that's a problem for later. The thing is we need two cycles of the bottom circuit. And the way we actually get this is with a uh, interesting minecart. So what we do is we have a double piston extender right here with an observer facing this way. We're gonna get ourselves a uh, fence, usually using end rod. Just place any old block here. Minecart, just furnace minecart is fine. Even a regular minecart is fine. I just like the furnace because you can't get in it by accident and mess it up. And then we're gonna have a glass block right here. It can be anything really. And then we're gonna have a slab right here with a wooden pressure plate on it. So we can get this sort of double extender thing. And if you retract this piston, you can see it kinda does that. And the way we actually take an output from this is pretty interesting. What we do is have a glass pane right here and an observer like that. You can see this observer will actually give, um, I'm just gonna have an observer here for testing. It'll give a pulse, it'll wait a long time and give one more. And that's just enough delay to, uh, between the cycles of it working. So now what we have to do to solve the problem of the single extender, what we're actually gonna do is have a four game tick pulse into this piston to give a micro tick. And what that'll do, and the reason why this is a lamp is because it can't be a note block because it'll update too fast. 
suppose. It'll chain, it'll detect that the observer is underneath it before it actually powers. So that has to be a lamp. And um, so even if we do give this a micro tick, uh, why did I break that? That was weird. It doesn't actually power anything because it doesn't get updated. And getting this to update is a little bit tricky because we need to have enough um, block event because this is really late in the tick. So we have to make sure we update these after. And the way we actually get this is very interesting. So we have an observer, a piston like this, and that. And what it'll actually do is when you give this a pulse, it'll kind of go up and then down again, and which I think is interesting. You can kind of see like that. So this is extremely useful because then we can go onto the storage. We can take an output from here. Oops. We have an observer facing downwards. A four tick repeater to give two pulses for the storage. We have this here. Then a slab of dust that'll power those two. And then to power this one right here, we can uh, have a block and a rail, and then two observers like this. And then this observer right here will actually power this one at the perfect time. So that'll be the storage for this. And then actually to get this double extender, we can just run four observers like this, one up into a lamp. And this will actually give a triple pulse, which is long enough to keep this lamp on to give two pulses so we can extend and retract the double in time. And then what we're going to have to, for the double circuit is we're going to have, first off, a sticky piston here, a lamp here for the toggle. So it doesn't uh, extend on the, um, that doesn't extend, it doesn't fully retract on the uh, closing because we need to have that. We're going to have observer here, observer facing upwards to bud this for the full retraction. Then we need a dropper here. This dropper can't be silenced, unfortunately, which stinks, but oh well, what are you going to do? And then observer here, and that's going to do the extension by powering that block right there. And so um, we can give that a test right now. Just give this a one tick. You can see that's kind of working. We almost have the full storage here, but um, if we move this lamp down, we can see that if we power it again, this, oops, that's fine. You can see we get that, and that'll retract all the storage and things. So now to get all the rest of this, we're going to actually have a toggle right here. We'll actually move this first. I have a toggle here, and then another toggle right here, and then a lamp, and then this right here, and that'll power that'll depower late and like power early. It just so happens that it's like the right timing. So it gets blocked here on the opening and it'll power at the right time on the closing. Cause this, uh, this gives two pulses. It'll go down then up and power that piston. And this is also how we're going to tri trigger the double at the end. I'm going to have just a simple dropper hopper. Put that in there. And that's why this, uh, that's why this setup is super nice. Cause you get basically a double for free if you get that. And the last thing to do is to trigger this toggle at the very end we can do with a note block piston like this block oops copper right here and two observers up into this and if I never covered why this is a note block uh, because this toggle changing gives a pulse to this at specifically the wrong time and so what would actually end up happening is it would just do this instead of um, we're actually retracting so we had to put a note block here to make sure the retraction here was fast enough so that's just really funny and then we can actually power the side here and the top by just taking an output from this lamp changing states. Uh, so when it's down here, it doesn't detect it. So that's kind of nice. We can have a block here, a dust, observer, dust. And then for the last move, we need a single on the, uh, the closing and a double on the opening. So just have two observers facing up and one across. And that should be the entire door done. That stuff now. A couple other things that I didn't quite explain, like the fact that this timing here is actually a tick perfect to block the, the top from spazzing and the closing for an extra time, so couldn't really make it much faster than that. The timings are pretty close. Um, anyways, let me just break that observer. That is pretty much the entire door. I explained it to about the best of my ability. Um, hopefully uh, people know how to make two wide uh, mega tech layouts now, so looking forward to seeing uh, more of those uh, in the future. Uh, maybe if someone wants to take on the challenge of building one, even if it's an extra layer on the top and bottom, I'd like to see it. Uh, 
Anyways, thank you guys very much for watching this video. I'm very glad to finally have it made. Not really going to be editing it, just kind of one take kind of thingy. So, um, yeah, see you in the next one.